Power systems the world over are experiencing a period of rapid evolution. The previous status quo of a large centralised typically fossil fuel generator is being replaced by a paradigm within which sustainability, flexibility and competition are key. Vertically integrated power utilities have been dismantled and competitive marketplaces have been established to encourage the most effective use of generation and network resources. The push towards sustainability has resulted in the introduction of emission limits, carbon taxes and, most important going forward, ambitious renewable energy targets. Under current operating practices, large amounts of expensive and carbon intensive system operating reserves are often required to ensure the security of power supply. And this is a particular issue on power systems which have a high penetration of uncertain renewable generation. A number of solutions have been proposed to remedy this situation. Flexible generation sources are typically employed to maintain the system balance, while interconnection between power systems and regions can increase geographical diversity and smooth fluctuations in renewable power output. Energy storage can also be used to balance periods of over and under supply of power. Demand response is a further option, of course, that is widely explored in the literature, but to date has a limited widespread usage. Demand response is regarded as an elegant solution to the issues of uncertainty and fluctuating power supply, as the potential significant latent flexibility of electrical demand can be harnessed to provide the required power system services to support renewable generation. It is important to note, however, that the benefits of demand response for renewable resources are neither the only nor the primary driver for demand response. Demand response is not a new phenomenon and has been employed in various forms across the globe for decades. The most obvious form of demand response is systematic load shedding, a last resort to avoid system blackouts. However, more sophisticated approaches have been implemented in a number of power systems. Time of use rates where consumers are subject to expensive tariffs during fixed peak hours or cheaper rates during nighttime hours have traditionally been used to incentivize reduced peak consumption. The objective of time of use rates is to reduce the difference between the peaks and the troughs of the demand profile, thereby reducing the need for generation cycling or part load operation. This therefore allows more efficient use of generation, transmission and distribution resources. Traditional approaches for demand response were therefore adopted due to the predictable and cyclical nature of electricity demand and the dispatchable nature of traditional generation sources. While this is appropriate in power systems dominated by conventional nuclear and fossil fuel generation, systems with large penetrations of renewable resources require demand and the system as a whole to behave in a more flexible manner on a continuous basis. Crucially, this will allow the optimal use of renewable resources and ensure that the system balance is maintained. The concept of continuous demand response and in particular the use of price signals to elicit this response was proposed as far back as 1998 in the seminal work by Schwepp et al on spot price electricity. In this work it was proposed that price signals at a resolution of five minutes could be used to maximize the economic efficiency of the power system in revealing the true cost of electricity provision to consumers and therefore providing an economic signal to maintain the system balance. The use of price signals to this effect is termed indirect load control and at a time resolution exceeding five minutes it was deemed that direct load control would be required to ensure the stability of the system. This was a view shared by Callaway and Hiskins However, they prefer the use of direct control for all ancillary services as the system operator has great uncertainty when demand is controlled directly than indirectly through a price signal response. Under indirect control, the aggregator has limited information about the demand that's being controlled and must estimate the price response from its demand portfolio. Prices are then issued to induce an expected response. Prices under this approach can be geographically varying, up to the resolution of information available to the aggregator, which may be at the level of several hundreds or thousands of households. Direct control involves direct communications with individual appliances and then detailed information about the interactions with the surrounding environment. This is more computationally and communicatively more intensive, but allows a more precise response and individual control set points can be set to each appliance, 
facilitating control on demand response at the highest possible resolution. The benefits of demand response are widely lauded. Advances in modelling and IT capabilities have made demand response an attractive option to increase power system flexibility. And this will consequently allow a more efficient use of the system as a whole, its assets and its resources. The flexibility provided by demand response can be used to meet the fluctuations of renewable generators and facilitate a higher penetration that will be achieved by relying on conventional generation alone. Although the energy cost of renewable resources, for example wind generation, is typically low, the associated system costs can be substantial. Operating costs are increased as both online, such as spinning, and quick start or standing reserve generation is required to manage the frequent and often extreme fluctuations in wind power output. Demand flexibility has been highlighted as a mechanism to facilitate higher penetration therefore of wind generation, whilst also reducing the system costs of its integration. Traditionally, variability and uncertainty from wind generation has been managed through a combination of ramping and part loading operationally conventional generation plants, interconnecting to neighbouring systems and storage. Whilst demand response has the potential to bring a great number of benefits, there are however a number of challenges that must be overcome before it can be considered as a valuable contributor to the power system. The overriding issue is the lack of experience and understanding in the nature of demand response. Too much of the work in this field so far has been based upon simplistic models with superficial results. At this crucial stage in the development of demand response, it is imperative that a clear and concrete understanding of demand response is established so that a realistic evaluation of its sustainability and its provision of system services can be determined. Demand is clearly a highly diverse and complex resource, varying according to a multitude of external factors. Despite the limited understanding of the nature of demand response, particularly at the system level where response of demand of many different types of sectors and applications is aggregated, it is clear that the resource is highly diverse, so using a single model type to represent all demand is unrealistic. However, the ability of demand response to support power system stability, to leverage existing assets, to offset expensive network upgrades and to support the continual push to decarbonise generation is abundantly clear. When evaluating demand response solutions, it is imperative that it is considered in the context of the entire energy system. Demand response alone may offer certain benefits. However, when the interaction with other system components is considered, demand response becomes a very attractive option. Going forward, the ability of network users from the largest generators to the smallest households to provide flexibility to the network will be crucial and will be highly valued by network operators.